2nd of January, still out grazing. Watering hole's a bit busy. It's the 2nd of January, 2024. We have been watering out here at the puddle for over six weeks. I'd say that we are beginning to run out of water. So in the six weeks that we've been pumping water for the cows out here, probably the biggest trouble that we have is the fact that the trough freezes over every night. We didn't bring the insulated trough out here, so the float sticks up. And so we have to come over and break the ice around the float every morning so that it pumps. The other issue, of course, is down in the puddle itself. You saw down there all of the ice. Uh, we have a little bit of trouble with the water coming up in the hole. So as we've said in some of the other videos, this is a very, very small puddle. This is what we call it, the puddle. Very, very small, extremely sandy banks. The water level comes in right there along the edge where the ice is all really sloped. And so now the ground is frozen and the water has a hard time coming in. The ice in the middle now is well four, five, maybe even six feet deep in places just because of how the, the puddle has formed. And what used to happen is there was a layer of ice up here and then the water would only come up to down here. So the hose would come through the ice without water touching it and then into the water. So it wouldn't freeze. So in the morning you could turn the pump on and away it would go. But now because there's so much ice down here, the water comes right up to the top, water touches ice with the hose, freezes the hose. So every night we've had to take the pump out, set on the ice, come back in the morning, cut the ice, put the pump in, and just in the past half an hour of running, maybe even less, the pump has already sucked this down. I, I, can, I can't even touch the water, and I got long arms. So we're running out of water over here, so we've got to move the cows. The nice thing is with the way the system has worked, is even though we've had the shortest days of the year, we have extremely low sun angle, only like five to six hours of actual sunlight every day. We've had a week straight of overcast, grossness. We have never once had to false charge these batteries. What I mean by false charge is to hook a truck up or a generator or something and charge them other than with the solar panels. The pump is pulling 24 volts, 10 and a half amps. The panels are making 4.1 amps at the moment. So we're losing a little bit in, out of the batteries. But as soon as the pump shuts off, the panels will be packed into the batteries just fine. The batteries are showing about 50%, even though we're pulling out of them. So they're actually about as happy as a solar system can be. The electric fence that we had set up on here, you can see Papa's got one of the spools just laying on the side here. The electric fence worked very, very well. He had a couple of issues where uh, the cows knocked the spools off the pole and they were able to get into the system once or twice, but other than that, that worked out very well. So the cows are taking their uh, their last drinks. Here in about an hour or so, we're, after we have lunch, we're going to move the cows over to their new place. They got about a four hour walk ahead of them and we're gonna take the trough, well not the trough, sorry, we're gonna take the panels and the battery box and the operator right there, and we're gonna take it over to the new system and get it set up, and we have an insulated trough over there, we're pumping out of a well. But this is a wrap over at the puddle. We got six weeks of grazing out of this. That make you pretty happy, Papa? Oh yeah. Yeah, six weeks of grazing over at the puddle. So we'll move over onto 22 and set up the well system. Pump is out, hose is coiled, it'll go in the trough, as soon as the cows empty the trough and the tractor will take that home, panels down, battery box is down on the back of the truck, off to the next site. All right, we are over at the new water system, 22 we're gonna call this. We got our solar panels mounted up on an A-frame made of fence panels because the topography here isn't really conducive uh, to solar. We're actually down in a bit of a low spot. It's upwards all the way around us. And that hill right there actually ends up taking an hour of our afternoon sun in the winter. So we got these panels up. They are not going to be uh, near the cows. The cows cannot rub on them. You can see the little white post, the electric fence there. And also right there, because we actually want the cows over on the fields there and over that direction. We don't actually want them on the grass. So let's talk about the electric fence system real quick. There's the fabulous Papa rolling out the wire. Gear reduction uh, spool for rolling it back up makes it a lot faster and easier. Okay, so now we got it tight. It just hangs on the fence like so, locks in place, cows can't get it off. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Wire is actually tight and you can't see it, but it is tight. Now we'll go put it in the posts. Okay, show us how we put this in here. Lickety split, cows can't get that out. One more time, how long does this take? Oh, if I go ah, there way. we go. I love to get you again. Okay, third time's charm, right? There we go. Now, someone had asked in a previous video, what's a step-in post? This is a step-in post. The bottom looks like this. And the idea is you can use your foot. 
Oh, wait, this is Canada. That's frozen. No problem. Get a hammer. Smack that sucker a few times. It's in the ground anyways. Step in post. Very easy to pull out. Very easy to put in. And at a corner here, we got three posts just to take the tension of the corner. There's the charger right there. It will be in the sun when the truck moves. Everything's out of the way of the cows. And the fence will head off to the north there to keep the cows away from the water system. Back to the water system. So it's the same batteries, same panels as we had over at the last place. Panels come into the back of the box here. These are the panel wires here. They come into the charge controller and this is the interface for the charge controller. So we can see we're sitting uh, in really good sun. We have five amps at 70 volts coming in. We're actually pumping right now, pulling almost nine amps in the pump and we're still positive into the batteries in theory. So the sun is actually putting in more power than uh, the pump is taking. So nothing has changed in the box here. What has changed is the pump. This is a absurdly expensive pump, actually. I think they're three to $5,000 to buy back in the day. And this pump controller right here converts our DC 24 volt into a uh, three phase, um, four to 18 volt, three phase. So with three phase, we can actually change the speed of the pump. There is a knob inside, you can't see here, of course. We can actually change the speed of the pump. So at full bore, it'll pull about 12 amps, 24 volts. And right now we have it turned down to just about eight amps, 24 volts we're still getting really good flow but don't need to pull all that power at the moment now to keep the weather off of this fancy pump controller it's a five gallon pail with a broken handle and a pole in the ground and a rock you gotta keep it simple so that pump is actually down here this is a board well not quite 40 foot deep water's about 12 to 13 feet down it's actually gone down about four feet since we started pumping we haven't pulled out of this well in uh, quite many years just because the solar technology 20 years ago when the well was drilled was not spectacular. So this is the insulated trough. Uh, the trough is insulated on the bottom and on the sides has a drain plug on the other side. I just finished building this lid. You may have seen the short about that. So lid has got tin, plywood, and uh, can't see because that boards here. There's actually styrofoam insulation in between two layers of plywood with the tin on top. Not perfect, but it should work very well. You can see the stream of water coming in. It's running pretty good. Probably running seven to eight gallons a minute at the moment. There's a few floaties we got to get cleaned out. Here's the float. So if I lift this up, in a moment, uh, the water should stop pumping. There we go. And if I turn it on, it'll start flowing again. Just like that. Now, there is no check valve on the pump at the moment because this is winter, remember? We've got an arch set up here and the hose does not really hang into the trough. So it's not possible for us to pull uh, the water from the trough, siphon it back into the dugout, but this hose, what's above the ground, will drain fully when the pump is off. So that way we're always gonna have water work when we need it to. With the float on the uh, underneath the insulated lid, we're uh, gonna be fairly certain things are always gonna work when we want them to. How we can adjust the float, we can actually change the height very easily. There's a hose clamp here, and another one on the bottom of this pipe. Loosen the hose clamps, we can slide this pipe up and down and change where that float level sits. And because this pump actually is very similar to your high voltage water well pumps, it'll make 40 to 60 PSI. So if we wanted to later on, we could hook that up to a pressure tank and a pressure switch and run a half mile or a mile of hose and put a trough wherever we please. But the float won't work for that. So we'll have to unhook the float and hook up a pressure switch, pretty easy with these couplings, and it'll just run the same pump, very simple. Now, on the cow side of the trough here, we have these plastic cones. And it's gonna be very difficult for you to perceive, but this cone is actually wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And the idea is if you have a bit of ice in here and it's got a bit of a cone, the cow will push on the ice, push the ice under the water and be able to drink and the water coming through will eventually melt the ice. So we only have two cones in here. It's gonna be a little bit crowded for hundred cows, but they will figure it out. But that is the cow side of the trough. 20 years ago when this system was first conceived, that well was first drilled and this trough was put in place. The concrete was poured here actually all the way around the trough to hold it in place but also because they envisioned wintering the cows here on a regular basis and didn't want this to get all pounded out and dug down by the, you know, the way that cows act when they spill water and make mud and they dig. So we actually got a really, really nice system here in that we have the concrete set up with the trough. The problem with that is that the trough is concreted in and we have this big lump of concrete here. So it's kind of difficult to move it, although of course anything is possible. So here is the natural water level. We're just a couple of inches down. Looks like pretty good water for cows to drink. It's got a little air ice in the bottom has to thaw yet, but uh, the hose can't siphon it back. We've got a little bit of clearance yet. There's nothing for the float to get hooked on. 
should work very, very well, very reliably. Let's move them cows over. We've got about a three mile walk ahead of us, fences on both sides for most of the trip. Cows know the program, shouldn't take very long. First cow to drink. So that is the overview of our well system here on 22. Thanks for watching. See you next time.